Hi everyone and welcome back to my craft room. Today I thought I'd give you a tour that I had promised for a while now of my new area where I keep my junk journaling supplies. And as most of you know, I'm mainly a card maker. I have lots of card making videos. I've been on design teams. I have shown a tour of my card making area where I have my stamps and dies and those types of things. And probably over the past little bit less than a year, I have become really interested in junk journaling. I watched a few videos on YouTube and was just really loving just all the different ways you can use your supplies to create these beautiful books. So over this past year, I've kind of accumulated some supplies. I had had supplies that I've gotten together and kind of organized and I wanted to put them into one area where I could kind of keep my junk journaling supplies separate from my card making supplies. And that way I could kind of go back and forth from one area to the other whenever I felt like doing one project or another. So, so today is, this is actually going to be a part one video. I'm going to be showing you my tools and other kind of basic supplies for junk journal making. And I wanted to show you how I keep them organized. So maybe this would be something that could help you if you're looking for some ideas on how to keep your supplies that you use for your journals organized. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm just going to kind of pan back a little bit here and show you, this is my, um, well here, let me go like this. I might have some messy areas. So, but this is my sort of stamping and card making area over here. And I have a separate tour on that, that I can link and you can take a look at too and kind of see how I store my stamps and, and that type of thing. I also have a video where I talk about how I organize my scrapbooking papers and I've taken apart many uh, 12 by 12 scrapbook paper pads and have reorganized all my papers. So I have another video for that too that I can link below. That the, the scrapbooking papers kind of do double duty as my scrapbooking supplies, but I also use them for junk journaling supplies. So I won't go through that tour again, but you can just see up here that I have those papers that I'll, I'll take out for making journals. So let's go ahead and start over here. This table I've talked about quite a bit in, in some of my more recent videos. It's a new table that I got a little while ago and it has replaced a, an old card table that I had sitting in the middle of this room that I used as kind of a catch-all for if I was laying out a scrapbook project or something like that. I finally decided I was kind of looking around and I wanted to find something very inexpensive that I could use to replace the table that was a little more sturdy. I like the countertop high de desk because that's what I have in my for my craft desk as well. And so I found this on Amazon. It's actually a kitchen table that's made for a small space and it works really well as a second kind of craft table. And I use this for my making my journals. So I will kind of show you the, basically on this table, I keep all of my, my basic tools and I'm going to go through in a second what the basic tools are, but I'm going to start on this side. This is a shelf right here and it actually has three shelves and I, it's, I've kind of gone back and forth. I was keeping beads on here and then I kind of moved the beads away because I don't do that. I, I've been kind of making a few planner charms here and there, um, but I'm mainly focusing on the journals right now so that I can kind of practice and get better. But so these, I replaced the beads with clips and clips and kind of the hardware that I put on the journals. So I have this little container here that I keep um, just like paper clips and different types of binder clips that I use to clip my journals as I'm sewing in the signatures and that type of thing. I also have, there's some decorative things I have on here. I, I just like this little, um, this is like a little vintage hobnail glass container that I keep these pretty threads in that have like the wooden spools on them. I just like the colors. So I, it's always, you know, I've talked about before, I like to have little inspirational pieces all around my craft room too. So not everything is for crafting. Some of it's just for decoration, but this can also do double duty as, you know, thread for whatever I might use in my journals or something like that. So I just, I just like to have these here because they're pretty. I also have a jar of buttons that I 
that are kind of my favorite buttons. They're really colorful. And I sometimes add these to journals as well. And then I have some more binder clips in this jar here. These are floral ones that are really pretty. So I would probably, I would use these for kind of clipping things into, into journals. These jars here hold different sized binder rings. So depending on the type or the color journal I'm doing, I might use the silver rings. And these are various sizes from a half an inch, or no, not half an inch, an inch to two inch sized binder rings. So if I'm making a, a ringed journal, and then these are really nice. They're, they're different colors of binder rings. So they're metal, but they have um, kind of a, I don't know what, it's just painted rings. So um, just some bright colors. And those are really pretty too, if you want to do some, you know, kind of some brightly colored journals. So I just keep those out here because again, it looks, it's a nice display, but then it's also functional. And then in my, I use washi tape a lot more in journals than I use in card making. So I moved over my most favorite washi tapes to this area here. And these are all kind of like floral tapes, things that I would put in a journal. So a lot of my, I love fabric washi tape too. So I have a lot of that, which I haven't been able to find lately. I used to see it a lot at Michael's and I, I was looking around for some more and I, I couldn't find it. So I'm hoping that maybe as spring comes, maybe they'll, they'll have more of the, the floral kind of, it's like a, it feels like, it's just feels like fabric, but it's adhesive. So it's kind of nice. It's nice to use on the edges of pages and that kind of thing. So I have these and then I have just a jar of washi too. I just have them kind of thrown in the jar here. Lots of, I like using gingham washi and um, floral and just anything that kind of would go more with a type, like a journal, not, not so much solid color, but just kind of like printed colorful washi tapes. I'm considering getting, they have a washi tape uh, drawer set at Michael's that I really liked and it, it's clear and it's got three drawers in it. And I'm thinking I might, it, it would fit really nicely on the shelf. So I'm considering getting it, but then I also kind of like this look of being able to sort of rifle through your washi tape and just kind of get inspired. So I, I like to do that sometimes with supplies too. So we'll see. But anyway, the shelf is still kind of a work in progress. I have some empty spaces and these are just the, the, the dollar store daisy bins. I just love these and I got them in the, this mint color here and I probably use these. They fit really nicely on the shelf just as kind of decoration right now, but I, I use a lot of bins around my craft room to grab supplies and move them from one table to another. So um, these will really come in handy. So that's this side of the table. So there's only one shelf on this table here. It's just this, this side here. So right under here, I have these two, you've probably seen these before. They're iris cases and these are iris carts. They're five drawer. I got these on at Target. Um, they're sold out at Target. I've seen them on Amazon, but in a six drawer version, which I think is even better. So I can put a link to that, but the six drawer obviously just has just one other drawer you know, added to the, to the top there, but so even more room to, for storage, but, but these work really well. And the thing that I like about these carts is that they're usable for something else. So if I decide to move things around again in my craft room, these come in handy for scrapbooking projects and, and paper storage or, you know, whatever I might decide to do. But for right now, I thought this would be great to keep some of my basic tools and supplies for my journals. So let me show you what I have in each of the drawers. So I'm just gonna pull, another thing I like too is they're on wheels, so you can kind of pull out the drawer. Sorry for the shaky camera, I'm trying to like get a good angle here. So, oh, and let me show you on top too. Uh, I have just some, some little supply things on top of here. So it's nice you could store some other, you know, supplies that you don't, you're not using right away. You can just kind of keep stored on top, but it's got a nice little 
tray on top that's sectioned off and you can put, you know, if you're working with beads or something, you can pull the card out and have the beads on top and work on your desk and, and have them there. So it's, it's nice for that purpose too. So, so let me start from the top and we'll move down to the bottom. So the first drawer I have here are for tools and hardware. And this is, these are like the really heavy duty tools that I would use for kind of starting to put my books together. So I have a, a utility knife. I have an awl used to um, poke the holes to um, do the signatures if you're doing a signature uh, book. And then I have my pliers for jewelry making. I just keep these in here because um, I consider it hardware. <laughs> And then I also have a few packs of these little metal corners that sometimes I'll put on the corners of my journals to reinforce them. And then I have a big binder clip here that I use for when I'm sewing in signatures. Um, if you haven't seen it, I know I've linked it a couple of times. Amy from Kitty Witty Papercraft has a really good junk journaling course, online course that shows you how to put together a little golden book journal. And she uses, shows you how she uses a binder clip to kind of hold the pages back so you can get it, each signature in really well. And so it, it, it is very helpful. So a lot of the tools that I have here are ones that she recommended. So let me put these here. Now these other things are just, these are supplies that I had for a really long time that I kind of had put away for a while then I pulled them back out because I thought they would become in handy for um, making journals. So you'll notice, I don't know, for those of you that are longtime scrapbookers, you might remember Making Memories. This was one of the first companies that I fell in love with when I started scrapbooking. And I had bought, I, mean, I forget what's in each of these. Grommets were really big a long time ago, like big like using eyelets and grommets and that kind of thing. So this, oh yeah, this is a grommet setter. So if you want to, now this would be, instead of using a crocodile, you would use this and it's like a, I don't even know if I've ever used it. I think you, you like push down and you can set different sized. I, this is an eyelet setter. I'm sorry. Um, let's see what it says here. Yep, set it, eyelet setter. <laughs> so you can you can do that by hand using this tool. So I just kept this around because you never know when it might come in handy. I do have I do have a crocodile right now that I really like, but um, I just I kept these. And this is um, more of the same thing. This is like a hand uh, eyelet setter. You'd use like a little hammer with this, I think. So I kept that. Um, what else do I? Oh, here. These are some little pieces of different uh, grommets and eyelets that I had around that I just kind of saved. I had um, these little, I don't even know what they are. I think you use them to attach. Oh, you can make, it's like a little hook that you can attach um, pictures together. But I was thinking they might work somehow in a journal or something. So I just kept these things around. And then um, these are some really big grommets. These are from Making Memories too. So. And then just an old acrylic album. I'm not sure why I put that in there, but I think I was just kind of not sure where to put everything, so I put it in here. So that's tools and hardware. This is very heavy, but this stuff holds, these drawers hold a lot, and they're very sturdy, so, and it's nice. They just slide right in their little compartment here. This next drawer are border punches border punches and other types of punches. I also did a video a while back of the punches that I use in card making. And when I organized my drawer of punches, I had a ton of them. The ones that I wasn't going to use anymore, I moved over to this little um, drawer. And th these are all things that would come in handy to maybe do border punching on pages in your journals. Um, these, I have this old scallop punch here that's great for punching out papers and then making little like little ephemera clusters and that type of thing so I have a couple sizes of those I have a tab punch here that I use 
a lot. Um, I just got this. This was from, this is from Crocodile. It's actually a corner punch that punches a, like a cloud shape, kind of a scallop shape. And then, um, or it's a scallop shape and then also a cloud shape. So it's kind of a, like just a little wavy, wavy uh, corner that you can add. And that looks really nice on, in a journal. This is another, these are two different tab punches. Oh, this one does like a file folder tab. So those are great. These are some old Martha Stewart punches that I had that I thought would come in handy for, for journaling. So always keep your stuff around. If you think you, if you're purging a lot of things in your craft room, I always say put them away and because you never know when you might use them again. This stuff I didn't use for a really long time. Now it's, they're coming in handy again, all of these punches. So I'm glad I saved them. And then I have, this is a really old border punch. This is probably one of the first ones I ever got, but I thought this would be really cute. I love scallops. And so I thought it would be cute to add to edges of pages. And so I have lots of the Martha Stewart punches. I really like those. So those are all the border punches that I have. This drawer is very heavy. Okay, and this next one is ribbon and trim. So again, this is stuff that I had maybe had around in different areas and I just kind of combined it all into one area. Some stuff is new, um, but some of this is ribbon that I've had around forever, like this gold ribbon I got in, I don't know, this Cosmo Cricut. I've had this forever, never used it, but I've already used it twice for a journal that I made. So, so again, really good to keep stuff around or at least put it away for a while because, you know, you never know. And then let's see, what else do I have? Just some, I've had this for a really long time. This is kind of like some colored twine. Uh, some appliques. I really love these, putting these on pages. Um, some flowers and just some, some other like trims. I made a journal that's actually in my Etsy shop right now that I use this trim, it's really pretty pom-pom trim. I love this daisy trim. This is new. I just got this. Also, um, oh, this is really old too. <laughs> this is from October Afternoon Sarsaparilla. It's just, it's, but these trims are great because they'd be perfect for, for journals. So I'm glad I kept these around. I had an old drawer that was just filled with old trims and things that I wasn't using and I never touched it. And then I recently went through it and kind of put everything over here. So this is some Velcro tabs and just some odds and ends. I have some embroidery floss, some, some twine that I wouldn't use for tags, but I thought would come in handy maybe for some pages. So anything I thought that would kind of be journal related, I stuck in here. So that's this drawer. And then the last two drawers, I won't show you both of them because it's kind of the same. Oh, wait a minute. No, this is, this one is the same as the one below it. These are both ribbon and trim. So this is just, I just random ribbon and trim. It, um, Michael's has a, like a hanging display of huge uh, bunches of just ribbon. And I bought a couple of them and they're great because it's all different types. So this will last forever, just, you know, and it's got all different colors. So it, um, it's again, great for edges of pages, edges of pockets, that kind of thing. So it's just a lot of variety. So that's the ribbon. And then on the last drawer, I keep findings. So that would be things for uh, making like little beaded charms, um, the little lobster clasps that you put on the end of charms. I keep, this is the thread that I use for sew, sewing in signatures. It's like a wax thread. And then just, just some like, you know, chains and that kind of thing. Just anything that would um, work with the, like kind of jewelry making, sewing, that kind of thing. I just kind of all kept in here. So, so that's that. My needles for, um, sewing in signatures to the, the heavy duty needles. This one is 
the, I'll just start from the top and kind of go down again. Um, the first drawer here is lined paper. So this is anything that you would put in your journal for, for journal, you know, for actual journaling. So like writing and that kind of thing. So I went through and I have any scraps from, sometimes you get 12 by 12 scrapbook paper that's lined. And if I use some of it, I'll put the scraps in here because they can come in handy for making a page or something like that, where you just want to do some journaling or add or turn it into a journaling card. I also have just random lined paper, you know, that's good for journaling. Again, I went through a lot of old stuff that I had from like basic gray and that type of thing. I think this pack from the capture collection, but it's got all these great lined papers in it. So I thought they would definitely come in handy for, for journaling. So I grabbed those and just put them all in one spot. And then I've also been doing a little bit of shopping on Etsy in some for some vintage supplies. And so I have some lined paper from a few packs that I got from there. I also have just, you know, around the house, we have grid lined paper. And um, this was a ledger pad. This is not vintage. I just, you can get ledger pads, um, different colors on Amazon. So I just picked up a pad of the green and I, I use this paper a lot. It's nice. It's thin and it's got, it's got a nice color to it. I like it. I'm trying to think of what else, just some more scrapbook papers. Um, yeah, anything that has lines on it, I have in this, in this, uh, drawer here. So if I'm looking for a piece of lined paper. I'll, I'll grab a few sheets from this to start my journal. And then the next drawer here are the lined cards and the guest checks. So, so in here I have, so you probably see a lot of journals have these guest checks and which I love. So I have some of those from different Etsy shops that I've been to, and then just some fun, like little invoice sheets and that kind of thing. So it's kind of the smaller rectangle shape. And then this is a punch card. These are some punch cards. And then I have a lot of these game scoring cards. So also like the bridge, bridge scoring cards. So these are really nice for, for journaling, and adding to journals. I have those in here. I have some more bridge. This I got from an Etsy shop and I love the cover. This is a vintage bridge pad, scoring pad. So there's plenty of pages in here. So this will last me a real long time. And then I have a couple of these little iris cases. This one has just extra lined cards, just kind of random cards in here. And then this one has library pockets. So anything that's got that library look to it, library cards, and then the little, I have a bunch of the little pockets in the bottom here. And then I also, I had some like more, the basic gray stuff I had, they had a whole collection of kind of like library pocket things. And I had those in storage and I remembered I had them and I went and I got them all out and I stuck them in here. And now it's so great because I have tons of supplies I can use. Oh, and I also have index cards. These I like these uh, kind of bright colored index cards. So I have a couple of packs of those, which I actually use in my normal life. <laughs> so I like to write on index cards. So I've got those, but they, you know, they work for the journaling too. And then I've got some other bigger ones. So that's this drawer. And the next drawer is cards and envelopes, which this, these are just, again, like other random cards I had around that I'm not using for card making, but I thought would be great to slip inside a, a journal. And I have a couple of glassine bags too, but mostly, it's mostly envelopes. Some of these I got from an Etsy shop too. So some of them are vintage. This was a, another, a basic gray. This isn't actually an envelope, but it's, um, like a waterfall or cascading 
card thing. It's like a file folder, so I kind of I just thought it would fit in this work in this drawer better. So I kept that in here. Just some extra envelopes, some more bat some these are little little bags. Um, but the mostly envelopes. And then some I also keep um uh, these vellum envelopes too, which I really like for journaling. So that's pretty much it. Not a ton in here, but um, it's nice for, I like to use the envelopes um, to put in the journals so you can tuck in little ephemera and that kind of thing. And then the last two are kind of, well, let me show you the last one. This is fabric. I am not, I don't sew but I do have a sewing machine, but I haven't, I, I don't have good luck with trying to thread it, but I, that is one of my goals eventually is to learn how to thread it, but I don't keep a lot of fabric around because I just don't use it, but I do like how you can go to Hobby Lobby or you can also order on Etsy, just the little fat quarters and they work perfectly for journals because they can wrap a journal, like if you want to wrap an entire journal in fabric, the size is perfect for that. I tend to use these little fat quarters for um, just covering the spine of a journal. I really like that. I think this this is one that I used in my most recent journal, this color. But I just get them. I pick them up at you know Hobby Lobby or Michaels. They have them in packs, and I tend to go towards the floral ones or the, or the gingham ones. I really like those. So these are just. Um, some of these I've had around for a while because I, I would keep them around for scrapbooking projects, but um, I just put everything in this container and it works great. I have um, some flannel and I have mostly cotton and I do have some Christmas in here too that I got. This was like the dollar spot, I think, at Michael's. So I have this around for when Christmas comes back around again. So, so this is nice to have here. And then the last drawer here, this is some, I, I didn't know where to put this because I had so much of it. These are travel brochures and postcards that I've collected just from random places. So, um, but they're nice, again, to put in journals, like blank postcards and things, maps and that kind of stuff. So I thought this would come in handy for, you know, like a travel journal. So I just have, I didn't have a lot of room to put these anywhere else. So I thought just, I can just throw them all in here and they'll be nice and organized and I can go through them as I need to. So that's it for um, my basic tools and kind of the basic parts of making a journal and how I store them. The second part of this video, I will kind of show you the fun stuff. So like, like the vintage ephemera and the things that I, the little extras that I like to put in my journal. So definitely stick around for that. That will be coming up soon. And if you have any questions about how I store everything, just uh, leave me a comment below. And thanks for so much for joining me today. And I will see you in my next video.